Uh, good afternoon and good evening, listeners, wherever you are, and welcome to Nomadic Diaries, revealing the secrets of life overseas. Our mission for Nomadic Diaries is to provide information that encourages, promotes, and educates travel and life overseas in a deep, deeper and more meaningful way so that all those who choose to launch and to live overseas can experience a better cross-cultural experience, a better cross-cultural lifestyle. My name is Doreen Cumberford, and I'd like you to meet my partner, Sharon Fields. Sharon, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself before you introduce our guest? I will. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. I've been a nomadic house and pet sitter full time for the past 10 years. The past two years, I've kind of settled in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, and I'm very excited to start this new venture with Doreen. Our first guest is Terry McGinnis, and Terry has a teaching background, intercultural travel lifestyle, and we're just delighted to have her as our first guest. Terry, welcome. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I fell into this nomadic lifestyle a bit because of my husband's job. So I was um, accompanying him on an opportunity. So our first assignment, I say ours, because I think, you know, the, the spouse has a big supportive role in many times. And I think Doreen, you can attest to that also. So we went to Brazil and we lived in Brazil for a few years, um, had our first child in Brazil. We returned back to our native um, home of Michigan in the USA. Um, we're home for a little while and then headed back out into the um, onto the globe. So very exciting times, not always easy, but um, very rewarding. And I am now in the field, intercultural field, which I've been um, over two decades now. I transitioned after my first our first assignment, which just lined up very nicely for me. I was in education. I had worked in corporate America. And so I began into the, fell into the field, as I've told you before, Doreen, fell into this field of intercultural training. And it's very rewarding. And so I think it's kept it's kept my foot in that door of helping others and living through their excitement of exploring and, you know, learning about other cultures and living internationally. Thanks, Terry. This is great. So I met you through the intercultural culture chat group. Yes. And I know that you have done and been a professional in this field. And one of the things I know you do, you probably do many other things, but you prepare people for their launch and their assignments overseas. And primarily, I think that your, your clients are mostly people that are going for corporate. So can you tell us, how do you see the role of an intercultural training program in, in the preparation of expatriate lifestyles, please? You know, I, I obviously I'm doing that, so I, I believe in it quite strongly. And I think it is very helpful to families. And I think it serves many roles, not even from an educational standpoint of understanding you know, the mechanics of a move, the psychological transition that people go through when they when they go to another country and try to understand a culture that's um, different than their own. I also think it's a support role in many ways. And I see myself, you know, as a responsible cheerleader for them to help them feel confident about move and to feel good about the decision that they've made. And I see that my programs do do that for people. I sometimes have clients that come in, maybe I have a a spouse, you know, it may be someone's opportunity, one person's career opportunity, and the spouse is making a huge change for that opportunity. They may be negative about it. They may be afraid about it. And I see my role is to help them feel good about it and positive about that. Also, but in a realistic way, I think all of us in this room understand international moves are not always easy. You know, there are some growing pains, there's bumps, but most of us who are doing it, um, I, I call it like kind of a serial mover, right? Like all of us, right? <laughs> um, we do it because there are huge rewards at the end and human growth. And I think, you know, a personal confidence that you get as this international person moving around. And uh, I think it's a gift. 
And that's what I tell my clients, you know, this is a blessing for you. It will open your mind, open your heart and give you lots of wonderful opportunities. Not to mention in my field, you know, for people in the corporate arena, it gives them this global experience to, you know, escalate their career and have other opportunities. So I think the sure. programs are wonderful for companies that do provide it. Not everyone gets this kind of a, a training. And I think that that's some something that I'm always trying to promote. And I see really, I really see my responsibilities to do a great job so that word gets out that this is something valuable and that your company should be doing it. And so I, I do think that they do help people not be so shocked when they go somewhere so different. This is really helpful. And my follow-up question to this was, I had started to build a little course last year called It's Never Too Late to Relocate because I found myself as a trained expat who had jumped through all the hoops in every decade from my 20s to my 60s, I had moved internationally. Yeah. And where Sharon and I are currently living, we're living in uh, San Miguel de Allende in Mexico, which is close to the US, but we find that not everyone has that training. Do you think it would be helpful to have that kind of training for people that are in their third chapter of life, let's say? Absolutely. I think you can always learn something. I think you can always grow. And you know, Doreen, you remind me of something really important. There are different phases in our life in general, right, that we go through as people. And yeah. I have seen expats be expats at different phases in their life. And one really great example is I know I can think of a particular expat that I've worked with. I actually ask her to come help me sometimes to talk to my clients because I feel her vast experience and going through expat life at all these phases really benefits my clients. So she was an expat with babies like myself, right? Then with children going through school, then, you know, with high school kids, then her children away as college students. And she's living away from them. And, and that's a whole different struggle for a parent. Then she's, you know, a, and then was living away as a grandparent, you know, and missing grandbabies. So there's, I really do believe that at different phases in your life, you can use different support. And those international experiences can have a different flavor because you yeah. have different things on your mind. And also for me, I think, you know, one thing that someone said to me that I think is was really very, very true is they said, geez, when I moved and had my kids, it was easy. I went in, I had the school, I had a PTA, I did all these things. I had friends, you know, like, like a drop instantly. Said, when I went without children and I was all by myself, I had to find a group. I had to find an organization. And actually when I was in Brazil, there was a woman who was at that phase in her life with a lot of international experience. And she created, she helped found the International Women's Club of Curitiba. And it was a wonderful organization because we had expats at all levels, right? The beginner, the newbie, the seasoned one, you know, the one with the babies and the one with the grandchildren and living away from their family. And we all had our own different worries and, you know, and, and layered on top of cultural differences and navigating all that. But I find that all of that training would be applicable to everybody. And I think you can also help people in like your position, Doreen, who's had a lot of experience and now is at a different phase in life maybe than maybe the young new people coming in is to create um, bonds of mentorship and things like that. And I think of some of the women that really mentored me, I think to be a good expat and to get me through the culture shock things. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a total proponent of educating ourselves till our very last breath. <laughs> Thank you. Great answer. <laughs> Education is so important in all life. It really is. And I think it keeps us, you know, it keeps our brain working. It keeps us young. It keeps us energized. I think we should never, I, I hope I never lo lose that desire. Right. So true. Yeah. So are there qualities that you believe the successful and happy expatriates possess? I do. And, you know, and, and unfortunately, very rarely, I do work with some people that I, I really sometimes walk away from a program and I, I'm worried about them because I think they're going to have a, a deeper struggle. I think, you know, this, you, you have to be someone with some level of open mindedness. You know, the one thing I always, I think it's one of the first things I always say to people is just try to remember it's not right or wrong. It's just different. And I think you have to approach these assignments and different cultures in that way. It's different. It's okay that I might not understand it right now, 
but I can be respectful. So I think this open mindedness, I think, is really critical for a person. And to be honest, not all humans are. And so some of these moves will be much more stressful for them, maybe not even successful for them. And I think that that would be one you know, huge quality. So I think open mindedness, I think what we were just talking about before, a desire to learn, a curiosity level people have, I think really helps them. Because if you're curious it and open-minded, right, you're willing to, to look at things differently and see how people do things differently and say to yourself, maybe not for me, but it's okay. And I think those two qualities, I feel like are so important. And sometimes, especially in a corporate move, what I have seen is the people that have this open-mindedness, this willing, this flexibility, right? Willingness to change, see things differently, maybe accept that some different way of doing something could be better or works in that culture, right? And you have to yes. go with it. I think those people are the ones that are super successful. I have seen people with extreme technical skills, right? Really good engineer, really good at, you know, this type of a very technical thing, but they don't have this other part. They don't have the socialness to them, the social skill, this openness. And they suffer because they have, I feel like they have a lot more cultural conflicts because they're quick to judge that it's wrong right? And this is the way we do it. And I think that that's tough on people. So I do think that the people that are more like this are much more successful. And I think both of you had enough international living that you have seen, you know what I'm talking about. There are the people that are, you know, really doing well and not that it's, I, I, I think you have to be realistic about it all, but I think I see some of the people that are really suffering. And for me, I think that they have you know, not had the right attitude either and not had the right qualities. And I, I remember a woman I met and she was so negative and she was basically counting the calendar days. And I said to her, I said, you know, with that perspective, it's like being in prison and you're just marking off a day. And I said, life is, life shouldn't be marking off days. You should find a way to try to embrace and enjoy your life because it's it, to count off two years of an assignment or something like that. It's terrible. You know, <laughs> it'll so, take forever. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I think when you start with that mentality, then you have set a tone to what your experience is going to be. You've decided it's a prison sentence, whereas you can decide something, you can make it something else. And I think how exactly. we position our mind, you know, about these things is very, makes a huge difference in these kind of moves. Do you have a follow up question to that? I don't. Sure. If I not, don't. let's, I think that's wonderful. very, I think that's very clear. And we talk a lot about growth mindset versus a closed mindset. Yes. And having a growth mindset where you're willing to accept that you can be educated, you are curious, there are things I don't understand or know. And I'm finding myself in that situation here in Mexico. It's easy to live here as a U.S. citizen, but it's what don't I know? What what is it that I don't understand and see in this culture? And that's where I sort of try and live on the, the cutting edge of, of my own mindset yeah. is continually push those boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so I think that open-mindedness is a huge piece of being an expatriate. So we have one more question for you. In your experience working with a lot of global companies, you've you've actually dealt with a lot of the globally mobile um, people. And can you share some good and bad examples of a company's role in helping the expat experience to be successful or not successful? Is there sort of a gold standard for yeah. a corporation to seek to land on in order to get their people prepared, mm -hmm. ready? Because when you're corporate, you're going for a purpose. You're going for a corporate purpose. Right. And not only do you have to have your family, your logistics, mm -hmm. your health care and everything taken care of, you have to have your mission taken care of is what am I going to achieve here? Because we know that it will be measured at the end of the assignment. Can you speak to that a little bit, please? Yes, I can. And, you know, I, I think there's, there's sort of this umbrella of what happens in corporate moves. And, you know, corporate moves, I think people when they have companies doing a good job are very, very fortunate. I honestly think as an American in a country of, you know, where immigration has been in our past celebrated, I think of people that have been successful in my country who've come with a suitcase. And I think, okay, I had a lot of support and a lot of help. And that's what corporate moves generally will be. What I have seen in the last um, 20 years is there's 
kind of two segments of support that happen from a company. They have sort of the mechanics of everything, you know, the visas and the, you know, getting the paperwork and getting the travel and getting the person actually to the destination. So that's yes. one side of it. Then they have this other side of where when you land in the country, we call it destination services. It's just the, you know, who's going to get you from the airport, make sure you get to a temporary housing, help you find housing in a school and all of these kind of things. And then the third part is, you know, that support of transition, cultural understanding, and that sort of thing. So those three pods, I think, are important. And I think companies that are doing well and employees that are happy and want to keep moving with that company are hitting all of those marks. What okay. I see because I'm in the cultural part is I think sometimes a real disaster can happen in the destination service piece of it. People arrive and especially, I think, I see it a lot on the American side. So I'm going to criticize our Americans a little bit. But in other countries where hospitality, someone arriving, being picked up, having that comfort of being taken to where you need to go on that first night that you arrive and you don't know anything, I think is critically important. And sometimes countries that are like the United States, which is very individual, very independent, we let them arrive. I have had clients who have come They've gone, they've had to find their house, temporary housing. There's a lockbox on the door and they don't even know, they've never seen one of these. So they're standing out in the rain or the cold. So can you imagine, I've come from India at sweltering yes. temperatures to Michigan in the winter with no boots, no coat, and I'm standing and trying to figure out a lockbox. That's one example of a client that I've, well, a couple of clients I've actually had that has had that happen. It set the tone for their move already in a just a really negative, not feeling supported, not feeling cared for. Whereas when I go to, when I used to go to China, when we originally went to China, we felt cared for. We felt like we were being welcomed. We were being helped to our thing. No one was going to let anything bad happen to us. I think those are feelings. But once you, if you start out with that bad feeling, I think then it's like, it piles on. So I feel like some of those kind of initi initial things are super important. I think also sometimes in corporate moves, there's a big disconnect between the people in HR and the actual, the actual person that is moving, the actual, you know, expatriate, right? And that disconnect makes all the difference in the world. I feel like the positive experiences are the ones where the HR is very much on it. They let everybody know every benefit that's coming to them. They make sure that they feel supported, that they're available. And I think one of the keys that I will say helps is when you have HR people who have been international people, they get it. I agree. And a lot of times you have HR people, not to not, but you have an organization that the people don't understand these international moves and they don't know what they really entail and how stressful that in the beginning they could be. So I think the companies I've seen that do a good job is they really sit, they do a one day sit down with their employee. And they explain all the benefits and how it's going to work. This group's going to support you here. Here's how it's going to be when you get to, you know, a look, you're going to go on a look-see trip. Then you're going to do this. You're going to have someone waiting for you and help you get set up and get a social security card or whatever CDC card you need in a different company or different country, excuse me. So I think those are the ones where the employee feels more confident. They feel supported, you know, and I think they get off on the right foot you know, first impressions do sometimes make a big difference how we feel going forward, they do. you they know, do. and, and never, and I always say to my clients, by the time they get the cultural training, it, sometimes I've had clients that are very angry, very negative with me in the beginning. And then I find out that they've had this horrific initial experience. And so, you know, I try to smooth it over and explain things to them and help them understand what my role is for them. And then usually we do pretty well, but I, you know, I can empathize with that. It's not, it's scary feeling for people. Well, I'm just glad that there is such a profession as intercultural training and that there yeah. are people like you to help in the world. I can relate to that a little bit. When we arrived in Japan, we arrived at Narita Airport with 18 pieces of luggage, I think, and three-year-old, but yeah. you know, an 18-month-old. And um, we had been told that we would be met, but what we, what that meant was we would actually be met after we had taken a train from Narita with 18 pieces of luggage in Japan oh, yeah. um, <laughs> all the way into Yokohama and they would meet us in Yokohama to take us to the hotel and the hotel room would not contain 18 pieces of luggage. Yes. 
<laughs> so I am very aware and familiar with those kinds of arrivals and the same corporation actually when we moved into Saudi um, they did a lovely job so it is very country specific isn't it and when we moved into yeah. Saudi you arrive there you get to they take you straight to your house give you the keys and in your fridge you have long life milk you have long life kind of bread some kind of yeah. bread you have tea marmalade coffee I think there's six or seven items that every employee arrives and That's has wonderful. in their fridge so you feel yeah. like it's something it's a start yeah. and then they say oh and tomorrow morning the welcome lady will come and meet you and how relaxing does that make you feel yeah. so yeah. I'm just people, glad there are people like you that are smoothing mm -hmm. the pathway for people who have been injured or traumatized during the process. Yeah, and I do try to communicate too. I think I see my role also is, you know, when I hear these stories that are, are not positive stories, I then communicate with my company and let them know, you know, I think on this other end of it, there was a there was a mishap that needs to be smoothed over and, you know, and help those people through. But you give a great example of how that makes such a difference, how that first night goes and how you feel. I think the other thing, the last thing I would say too, is I think understanding and it, it kind of circles back to what you were saying before, Doreen, about different phases of expat life. And when you are, a, you know, a young a family with young children traveling, it is much more overwhelming with and I have, I'm smiling because I've had the 18 suitcases and a toddler and a, you know, four-year-old and, mm -hmm. and I mean, your, your stress level and they're overtired and they're off a schedule. And I think, you know, having and, and, you know, sometimes I think that would be one of my passions too, is to, I've done it a couple of times and I've loved it, is to meet with HR groups, like bring a bunch of HR people in international departments and yes. I've done a workshop for them. And it was so rewarding because a lot of them came up to me and said, oh my gosh, now I understand why all the Brazilians were doing this and I was getting so aggravated. So there's, there's cross-cultural misunderstanding even between you know, these groups, right? Yes. And I yes. think it, I felt so good because I felt like it, there was a great impact because a few of those HR people that said to me, I understand now I'm going to do things different. This makes so much sense to me now, right? Instead of feeling like they had some complaining expat on the other end of a phone, right? Then they understood. And so I think that there's, there's always work we can do in this field. And that's a great example. There's work we can do on the back end of it, you know, on the on the when someone arrives and being that welcome person and and quite frankly i i want to say to every expat out there you know those of you who have lived somewhere and you you are welcoming the people in your in your company coming in and you take someone out for a lunch and you help them go to the grocery store expats are doing this work my they're doing some of the work that i do on the ground helping people as they land and i think that's the beauty of expat life that i loved i Felt like I was always in some small town community, even though I was in some of the largest cities in the world. You know, it you just people help each other. And I think that's the nature of good expats, right? We we've walked in each other's shoes. Mm -hmm. And I think we do do the work. We're doing this work all the time, every day. It's an excellent message to conclude on. Sharon. Thank you, so Thank you so much, Terry, for helping us launch our great our podcast, revealing some secrets for our listeners. Where else can we find you and information that you have put out? I am on LinkedIn, so you can find me there. I have my own company. It's called Intercultural Passport. I do a lot of work out there, and then I do some nonprofit work for the Interchange Institute. I'm currently um, training trainers, so I'm really enjoying that work. So people who like you in the field who decide, I want to do some more formal kind of work, and I, I just need some background how to do that. I'm offering train the trainer courses and I'm really enjoying that. I feel like one of my passions also is I want this good work to continue. We are a small field. Doreen was saying this earlier. And so I want to do good work because I want the word to get out that we are, we're here and we're here to help people and to make that transition smoother. So thank you so much. It's a beautiful message and thank you've been you. a great guest. Thank oh, you. Thank you for, I'm honored that you asked me to join and good luck with this podcast. I'll be watching. <laughs> Thank right. you. And we hope we will put all this information inside the Nomadic Diaries show notes that will go out with every podcast. And we'll be letting you know as soon as it is released, Terry. Okay. And we welcome all the listeners to tune in for more wonderful guests with impactful and serious messages that can make the difference in intercultural living across the globe. Cheerio for now. 